Welcome to the second of our Easter devotionals as we consider the questions surrounding Easter. Questions asked when Jesus was here but still relevant today. Today we're going to think about the question that Pilate asked, what is truth? don't know if you recognise this photograph where I'm sitting at it at the moment in Terrace Row. A number of years ago it came about that the courthouse was being done up and they needed somewhere to hold the court sessions and they used Terrace Row, the main hall. And when the judge was in residence, they supplied a table for him. This is the table that we still have. It's a very good table. It's a secure and solid table. And yet, strangely, we're not sure what to do with it. In my time, it's been moved around from the stage. Here it is in the hall at the moment. And unless someone had told me, I would never have known that this was once used as part of a court proceeding. Yesterday we saw a picture of two trees that looked a bit like a cross covered in moss. How the story, the original story, can get lost. And truth can be a bit like that as well. Standards have changed in our society. Policies are drawn up now. It would appear more by popular vote than by an official meaning of truth. Sometimes those policies appear more like the emperor's new clothes than anything robust or substantial. Think about it. I mean, there are truths that we know about, things that are non-negotiable, like in maths. Two plus two equals four. Wherever you are in the world, that's not going to change. But if you're a mathematician, you will know that there are some parts of maths that are just not as clear. And so it extends into science, the more mathematical sciences, again, Issues like gravity are pretty much reliable. But you move into some of the more speculative ones like my own in geology or in biology, which is where the home of evolution, for instance, has come from. And what is really still a theory unprovable is now quoted extensively as truth. And the idea of a creator instead of an evolutionary process is laughed at. It's a question of perspective. And if you want to move on, from there into all other areas of life. What about morality? If it feels good to do it, seems to be the way it is, or if it doesn't do anyone else any harm. That's a very subjective truth. It's part of the problem that we as believers have with the whole discussion around abortion. There's a very fundamental truth here. We believe that a baby starts at conception. It's a human being. It's not a question of perspective. And women's opinions and women's rights are very, very important. That's not the same as truth. And other issues as well we find in the church where we're at disagreement with our government at the moment. And if you want to go for morality, what about politics? What is truth in politics or in history or put the both together? Truth is more the way I would see it, isn't it? My truth, even if you listen to some of the theories of economics, they are different theories about what's best. So some people are capitalists, some people are, have different ways of looking at these things, but they are theories. And then religion. Now what is truth in religion? Could it be that all religions lead in the same direction? And which direction is that? Is it towards truth? Or is it away from truth? And can we make up our own to what suits us? These are the debates that take place. Are we all equal? Etc. Etc. All of these are issues today, but there's nothing new in them. These questions equally could be asked about what happens happened in Jesus' time. And that's the situation Pilate found himself in. He had a real problem on his hands. He had a group of very devout religious leaders, very moral people, wanting to kill someone because they thought his truth was different to theirs. And they wanted to hold on to that power. They came seeking Roman justice, though they didn't particularly respect Rome. And what was he to do? And I wonder did he know that the testimony that was given, that convicted this man, was given by false witnesses. And so we read in John chapter 18, after Jesus was arrested and tried, then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters. That would be unclean. 
so that they could not be defiled, but would eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfil the word that Jesus had spoken to show what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? What is truth? It's a good question, isn't it? Pilate's confronted with this man who stands quietly in front of him. What's he going to make of it? What's he going to do with him? He says, by your own standards, by your own people's standards, you, you stand condemned. By their truth, you're guilty. But it's my job to make a decision. People still write Jesus off. But listen, this is not a new theme in John. Listen to what John has to say as we go through some of the writings in his book, some of the verses. So let's start at the very beginning as John sets the prologue. This is what he says. He says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And then in verse 17, the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Or what about the well-known verse towards the end of John's Gospel? And John is, Jesus is speaking to the disciples and he says to them, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Very clear, unambiguous. And then speaking to other people and he says this, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So what's Jesus saying here? Getting back to the original meaning, not the desk just set to the side not the tree covered in moss. What do you think Jesus is saying about himself? Well, he's saying that his word is God's truth. We're not caught in some moral maze here where Christians appear bigoted because we show a lack of tolerance. We're presenting God's truth that will not change. He says he is the only way to God. No one, it's a big statement, comes to the Father except through him. No one, not you, not me, not any single person in this whole world can come to God except through Jesus. In the context when Jesus is speaking, is the context of John 14 in my father's house are many rooms he's speaking about heaven and then he says if you follow my truth 
you will find freedom. And maybe you've messed up. Maybe your life is going the wrong direction. Maybe you're caught in the shades and the shadows. Maybe you've had to hide. Maybe you need to leave it behind and follow what God says. He calls us to obedience to his word. If you abide in my word, you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. He calls you to be connected to him. No one comes to the Father except through him. And he calls you to be full of grace. His grace, his truth, is not judgmental, but it is loving, reaching out. And we're told in Scripture to speak the truth in love. So Pilate was faced with this dilemma, this query, this problem what is truth and he's faced with it because the words of Jesus which still come to us are for this purpose I was born and for this purpose I came into the world to bear witness to the truth everyone who is of the truth listens to me ultimately the truth will be seen at the end when we are with the Lord. And then we will know if our view of truth has reflected his. But he tells us how to prepare. He says he is the truth. And when we listen to him, when we follow him, when we abide in him, we will belong to him. This is the message of Easter. In the uncertainties and the changes and the vagueness and the greyness of our society, just as the first century, there stands one man, Jesus, the Son of God, who will lead us into truth, who will set us free. May God bless you. See